Thank you for coming on such short notice, Honorary Knight. I know you must be busy. Well, to make a long story short, there is a particular matter at hand that the Knights requires your assistance with. <sighs> yes, it has been one thing after another recently. Neither myself nor any of the Mondstadt garrison are able to catch a moment of peace. I have recently received multiple reports from the Knights of someone within the Lawrence clan having close dealings with the Fatui. The Fatui? Again? But who are the Lawrence clan? There was a dark period in Mondstadt's history when the aristocracy ruled over the city. The hard-won freedom that followed with the fall of Decarabian was lost once again, as slavery spread throughout the land. The first Dandelion Knight, Vanessa, spearheaded the revolution that overthrew the old aristocratic system and established the Knights of Favonius, leading Mondstadt to become the city that you see today. The aristocrats that had oppressed the people of Mondstadt were none other than the Lawrence clan. Oh, Paimon gets it! So the clan's descendants are now scheming with the bad guys to carry out more dubious deeds! We suspect as much, though we have yet to obtain any solid evidence. The reason I summoned you here today is to ask you to help us further investigate this matter. <sighs> Unfortunately, the Knights of Favonius and the Aristocracy have been at odds with one another for as long as I can remember. We've already considered every possible way of resolving our differences, but it seems the descendants of the aristocracy remain antagonistic towards the knights. No matter what stance we take when dealing with them, the outcome is always the same. Our efforts only result in adding more fuel to the flames. We could come knocking on their door on the grounds of a search warrant, but if the investigation were to come up empty, I'm afraid tensions and distrust would only increase. All of our past efforts would have been wasted. You are in fact the best candidate to represent the Knights of Favonius. But you need not emphasize your role as the Honorary Knight. You are a traveler from a distant land, and you can approach the aristocrats in this way. Once you come to friendly terms with the Lawrence clan, you should be in a good position to learn more of their possible connections with the Fatui. Whoa. Leave it to Master Jean to come up with such a thorough plan! <laughs> Perhaps such plans have become second nature after all the diplomatic issues I've dealt with. The name of the Lawrence clan member in question is Schubert. Lately, he can often be found strolling near the northern city walls. It is said that he is difficult to get along with due to his temperamental disposition, but if we approach him calmly, then things should go off without a hitch. Thanks again for your help. If you run into any snags along the way, I'll do anything in my power to support you. Huh? Who are you? Hello! We're here to... <laughs> Hello? Did I hear you correctly? Hello? Huh. And I suppose you think that you can simply strut up here and greet me in such an ignoble and vulgar manner? Given that I don't recognize you, I can only assume that you are a traveler of some variety. I'll have you know that you are speaking with THE Schubert Lawrence, a blood descendant of THE magnanimous nobility. If you wish to address me, you'd best consider your words more carefully. Such nonchalant manners are inadmissible and will never do. Now, if you're somehow capable of understanding anything I've said, then you will get down on your knees, apologize for your negligent actions, and give me a proper introduction. That is the appropriate etiquette. That's etiquette? Paimon's never heard of something so complicated before. Huh. In former times, when people knew their place and respected traditions, such conduct was only basic courtesy when greeting a nobleman and neglecting your manners would result in a swift whipping. Ugh. But look at the world now. Rules have been thrown to the wayside and manners forgotten. Ugh. I cannot bear to see such degradation. What did you say? You dare question the dignity of the nobility? 
I'll have you know that though the Lawrence clan is in decline, myself and others of noble blood are looking for a chance to restore our rightful honor. Just look around. The people are unruly and undisciplined. I, however, strive to retain the elegance and etiquette of the nobility. After all, we are of a completely different breed by birth. Save your words. I find your manners and bearing repulsive. I have nothing to discuss with the likes of you. Besides, I am in no way obligated to instruct commoners on basic courtesies. Now I have more pressing matters to attend to. I'll take my leave. Well, if it isn't the honorary knight. I'm just on my way out to gather some intel. I didn't expect to run into you here. Huh? Judging by your expression, you must have run into some trouble. Master Dean tasked us with a special assignment, but things seem to have run aground for the moment. <laughs> no need to get down on yourself. Sometimes things just don't turn out as planned. Even I can't guarantee useful intel every time I'm dispatched. You just have to keep at it and never give up. <laughs> hey, why don't you let me try to help? What's the problem? Master Jean asked us to build a connection with someone named Schubert Lawrence. But it turns out that he's a peculiar character that doesn't listen to anyone. Especially Paimon. Aha, Schubert! I know him! Let me guess, he said you didn't have any manners. <laughs> I've been on the receiving end of his lectures many a time. The Lawrence clan can be very particular about such things. Uh, you mean everyone in the Lawrence clan is just a big headache? As aristocrats, they believe there should be a certain distance between themselves and common folk. Uh, I understand their thinking, but that's just not how things are anymore. However, there is one exception among the Lawrence clan, my good buddy, Eula. Uh, buddy? That's right. Not only is she from the Lawrence clan, but she's also captain of the Knights of Favonius Fourth Company. Eula is special. She's not quite like the other members of her clan. She has her own beliefs and it shows. In other words, she doesn't really adhere to the strict rules and conventions of her family. However, she's still quite knowledgeable about dealing with the Lawrences. I'm sure you'll see what I mean if you meet her. Hmm, that's strange. If Eula is a member of the Lawrence clan, then why would Master Jean choose us for the task? Couldn't she just ask Eula? Uh, well, it's a little complicated. Basically, the Lawrence clan has frowned upon the fact that Eula joined the Knights. Her family members don't particularly care for her. In their eyes, Eula is nothing but a traitor to the family. She's very easy to get along with. Just explain the situation, and I'm sure she'll help you come up with a way to get along with Schubert. In fact, I think she's out in the wilderness on patrol this morning. You should be able to find her around Stormbear Mountains. Thanks, Amber. All right, you heard her. Let's go find Eula. Good luck, you two. I've got my own matters to investigate. You don't think twice before reaching for your sword, do you? <laughs> do you have any idea how long I've been tracking these targets? And now you get to stake a claim! <laughs> you think you're stronger because you got to them first? <laughs> Mark my words, vengeance will be mine! Uh, what? That's right. I heard the commotion and came as swiftly as I could, only to find you two already fighting the Fatui. Not only that, you are making quick work of them, too. If I didn't make my move, you would have been able to take all the credit. Still, I'm glad you're unscathed. 
Confronting that number of Fatui at once can be dangerous. Uh, sorry, Paimon doesn't understand what you mean, but thanks for your concern. Concern? Why would I be concerned for the safety of my arch enemies? Arch enemies? Wait a minute! You were saying how glad you were that we were unscathed a second ago! By which I meant, if you were injured, I'd have to escort two strangers guilty of stealing my targets all the way back to Mondstadt. Which would mean you'd cause me even more trouble. My vengeance would be swifter still. Huh? So that's how you see all this? Yes, that's me. Paimon thinks she's pretty strange. Although at least we can communicate with her. You dare to call someone you've just met strange? Forget the aristocracy. That's rude even by normal standards. Speaking of which, how do you know my name? This is the honorary knight of the Knights of Favonius. And speaking of rude, we're trying to investigate an aristocrat named Schubert Morris. He's so obsessed with etiquette that he's not even willing to speak with us. <laughs> I understand now. That's my uncle, all right. But why do you mean to investigate him? <sighs> I see. <laughs> you have some nerve to faming a family member right in front of me. I will have vengeance for this, too. No, no, no! This is an assignment from Master Jean! It's just an investigation, that's all! To the everyday citizens of Mondstadt, everyone in the Lawrence clan is scum. It's natural for rumors and unwarranted gossip to lead to such suspicion. Hard to avoid such a reputation when you're known as the ruthless rulers of old Mondstadt. Oh, so that's what you think of me? Hm. Yet another transgression to avenge. But... didn't you say it first? Oh... <laughs> Curious. We've only just met, and you've already given me three causes for vengeance. It's been a while since I've encountered anyone as interesting as you. I assume you need me to teach you the conduct of the Lawrence clan. Only then will you finally be able to communicate with my uncle, correct? That's right. Amber told us to come and talk to you. Well then, let's begin your training immediately. It'll be easier to train when we're back in Mondstadt. We'll require other people. We can put that aside for now. Besides, if it's the Acting Grandmaster's assignment, and Amber's the one who recommended me, I should comply. Ah, you finally arrived. There's no time to spare, so we'll begin with our first lesson. Wait, hold on. There's something we need to clear up first. Otherwise, it'll keep bugging us. So that's still on your mind, huh? Maybe you're the ones who can't let things go. <laughs> Don't worry, there's a time and place for exacting vengeance. Besides, I'm not in the mood for any right now. Best save it for later. Uh, you need to be in the right mood for vengeance. I already have a long list of vengeance to exact. Even if I wanted to begin now, I'd have to start in the right order. Who knows how long it will be before I get to you. <laughs> well, if you have so much to take care of, wouldn't it just be easier to give us a clean slate? Absolutely not. Stealing my targets, calling me a ruthless ruler, and suspecting my uncle. All worthy of vengeance in my eyes. But you needn't worry, at least not whilst we're investigating this matter. I'm sure you're familiar with the phrase, a man of moral integrity fears no slanderous attack. If Uncle Schubert didn't commit any wrongdoing, then any such investigation will prove fruitless. But if he did commit a wrongful act, then he should bear the full punishment. I'm sure you understand. Good. Now, there are two key points that aristocrats attach great importance to. Your manner of speech, and your bearing. Let's begin with your manner of speech. Aristocrats have a very unique way of carrying conversation, even with mundane daily topics. Oh, Paimon's already learned some unique conversation. Mark my words, vengeance will be mine! <sighs> Not even close. And besides, it sounds strange. Hey! Paimon learned it from you! And didn't you say not to call others strange? It seems you don't 
respect the rules of your own clan! No, I've no need to trouble myself with such frivolous formalities. Here, allow me to demonstrate. For example, when greeting a friend, you could say, As the morning dew greets the coming dawn, so do I greet you, my dear friend. Uh, as the morning dew does what now? However, such a phrase may only be used during the morning hours. Also, the party with whom you're speaking must be of approximately the same status as you. Morning dew is not uncommon, so it expresses that friendship should not be measured by value, yet also suggests that friendship between aristocrats is pure like water. Oh, no, no, no. You must be prudent with your words. Calling someone a good friend could easily offend them. Uh, but didn't you just say my dear friend in your example? Hyman's confused. Yes, I did. But you must know in the Lawrence family, dear friend is a set phrase that can only be used towards certain friends with whom one is acquainted, but not particularly close. It sounds much more pleasant to call an acquaintance a dear friend. So, another thing to remember. Aristocrats are concerned with face and being polite. However, if you were to use dear friend to address an intimate friend, the recipient would think that you were deliberately trying to estrange them. This is only the first step in making a greeting. After addressing one another, you then exchange courtesies. Wait, wait! This is all too abstract! Um, perhaps it would be better if you gave some real-life demonstrations. Ah, very well. Come with me. We'll choose some bystanders to converse with. <laughs> 